Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 28th annual Dillard Center for the Arts Senior Art Show and inaugural silent auction. Please welcome Celestin Joseph, the Director of Visual Arts for Dillard Center for the Arts. Along with Israel Charles, the Director of the, Dillard, the Artistic Director of Dillard Center for the Arts. We are so pleased to have this event here tonight, and we are grateful to have both Mr. Joseph and Mr. Charles with us to share the incredible works of these art students and introduce the art students themselves, such incredibly talented and wonderful young people. Without further ado, please welcome Mr. Israel Charles. Well, thank you, Grace, and special thanks to you and all our friends at the Broward Cultural Division for their uh, division for their role in present tonight's show. Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us this evening for our very first ever virtual senior art show. You know, at Dillard Center for the Arts, learning never stops, and tonight's show is just another example of that. And so, as I always like to do, anytime we have guests, supporters, parents, students, or friends joining us, I always like to start by thanking you for your most precious commodity, and that is your time. You've been so kind to lend us your time this evening, and we certainly appreciate that. Now, before we begin, I'd like to introduce the proud principal of Dillard High, an ardent supporter of Dillard Center for the Arts, Mrs. Cassandra Robinson, who will bring our opening remarks. Thank you, Mr. Charles, for that introduction. Again, I'm Mrs. Robinson, the proud principal here at Dillard High School. And this is really an honor to be here this evening because the Senior Art Show is a big deal around Dillard High School. It's a tradition and it's a combination of seniors and their great work that they've done over the years. But before I say anything more, I'd like to give a big shout out to the instructor, Mr. Celestine Joseph. Mr. Joseph is a great, great instructor. He does amazing work with the students and you'll see their artwork in just a little bit. But thank you, Mr. Joseph, for what you do year after year with our students. One of the things that Mr. Joseph does so well is most of our students, and I would say 99% of our students, let me take that back, is 100% of our students actually pass the AP exam. And that is an awesome accomplishment. And not only do they pass the exam, but they pass it with the highest scores out there. So thank you, Mr. Joseph, for what you do. Congratulations to all the seniors tonight. I just love what you're doing. I can't wait to see your artwork. You do amazing work. Thank you, Mr. Charles. Thank you, Mr. Joseph, Ms. Black. And then just a shout out again to all of the students and their parents. In your senior year, Adrian Monteroso, Aaliyah Matthews, Andrea Duarte, Ayana Agapofa, Isabella Lewis, Janaya Pascal, Michaela Tran, and Melanie Casanova. Congratulations and have a great night of art. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. And I want to echo her sentiments. And, uh, you know, anytime I get a chance to brag and boast about our program, I'm going to take the opportunity to do so. And, and, and that's because I'm so proud and I take great delight in being the artistic director here at Dillison for the Arts. Our visual arts program is arguably the best in the district and probably one of the best in the nation. And I think that's evidenced by the exemplary artwork that's produced by students who display ability that I think is well beyond their age. Uh, you heard Ms. Robinson talk about the excellent displayed in our, uh, in our AP scores, which we boast the highest in the county as well. And you can't forget the number of students attending some of the most prestigious schools in the nation, in many instances of, on full or partial scholarships. Now, uh, each year we typically host the senior art show in our beautiful art gallery here on, on campus, but as I said, learning never stops here at Dillard Center for the Arts. So together with our great friends at the Cultural Division and under the direction of Mr. Joseph, we're delighted to present tonight's show to you. I want to congratulate both Mrs. Black and Mr. Joseph for the tremendous work that they do with our students, 
but also just kind of echo what Ms. Rhymes was, say, was saying and particularly congratulate Mr. J for the work that he does to organize the senior art show on an annual basis. Uh, Mr. Joseph is a credit to our visual and performing arts program and the work that he does with our students is beyond impressive. And I'm not only uh, proud of the work that he's able to do as an instructor, but I'm particularly impressed with the role that he plays in the lives of our students, mentoring them and, and guiding them from the time that they arrive at Dillard until it's time for them to go off to college. Uh, he helps to shape them not only as, as phenomenal artists, but great students and, and, and good people. And, and that's so, so very, very important. And we're so proud of the work that we're able to do here in that regard. So listen, without further ado, let me not hesitate to introduce and welcome to the microphone tonight's show organizer, the phenomenal Mr. Celestin Joseph for more information on tonight's show. Mr. J. I know Mr. J's coming up. Maybe we have some technical difficulties on that end. Stay with us. In just a moment, I'm sure he'll be joining. While we're waiting, don't forget to, if you're following us on YouTube, go on your social media stream. Make sure you share the video. Uh, we're also on our Dillard Center for the Arts Foundation Facebook. Make sure you share the video there as well and invite more people to come out and enjoy this night of great hard work. There's Mr. J. Thank you, Mr. Charles, for that uh, warm introduction. Uh, just like Mr. Charles said and uh, Grace before that, I mean, we're really uh, excited to have you guys here tonight for the senior show. And this is a special opportunity for the students to be able to exhibit their work and share it with you in the senior show. Uh, you guys are gonna see a lot of wonderful work by these students, uh, not only in the silent auction, but also in the uh, storehouse that we have online that Mr. Charles mentioned. So you can go to the website and check out their work there. But I do wanna start out by uh, introducing these students to you guys and letting you see some of their work and have them speak a little bit about what they've been up to uh you know have them mention a little bit about their background and what are some of their future aspirations as they move forward here as artists uh looking to move into the art world so with no further ado i want to jump right in and uh have adrian monterosa come on up come on adrian just have a seat here. Thank you. Hi. Hello. So Adrian's one of our seniors this year. He actually happens to be our only male uh, senior art student this year. So he's amongst good company uh, with seven other ladies here uh, for this year's senior show. So Adrian, uh, to start off, can you... Uh, Give everyone a little bit about your background and tell us who you are and a little bit about uh, you know, your family and so on. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Adrian Monterosa. I'm a Latino artist that grew up in Sunrise, Florida. My parents are from Honduras and El Salvador. Uh, I spent my uh, formative years just yeah, usually playing video games and you know focusing on my studies. Although um, I began my interest in photography and art in general when I was reading uh, National Geographic in grade school. And I learned that I could, you know, take those photos that they used in those magazines. And that's when I sort of had that interest in there. And I began actually exploring art and photography around the end of middle school, but it wasn't until high school with uh, Mr. Joseph and Dillard Center for the Arts that I began to professionally um, explore that as a career and really develop my skills. So Adrian, when, when you're looking back and you're thinking about all of the, you know, different things you've explored and all of the different things you've uh, experienced, what is it about, you know, the type of art that you create and what is it exactly do you make uh, that excites you in terms of your uh, art 
that you're creating? Um, I really like exploring emotions and uh, not like other people's emotions and my own emotions. Mm -hmm. Photography for me became an expression of my own thoughts and emotions and seeing if I could express those effectively and as well as expressing the people I photograph effectively. Right, right. So um, I like to, whenever I take portrait photography, which is a good portion of my work, I like to have these conversations of how they are feeling and how they are and what their struggles have been and what their stories are so I can effectively capture their sort of essence. And that's what really gives me the rush whenever you know, I awesome. have a finished work. That's awesome, wow. So Adrian, also, uh, I know this is your senior year and you're making big plans to uh, go off to school. Can you tell us a little bit about what some of your future aspirations are, maybe where you're planning on going to school? Um, well, obviously, <laughs> I'm uh, still a little undecided, although I'm looking mainly at uh, Kansas City Art Institute in Missouri, uh, College for Creative Studies in Detroit, and um, SCAD, or Savannah College of Art and Design in Georgia. And uh, as far as career, I plan to work as some sort of a freelance photographer as well as a photojournalist mm -hmm. or a director of photography. Wow. All amazing schools and all amazing careers. I mean, uh, you know, of course, would everyone support tonight and, you know, going in to see your wonderful artwork in on the uh, silent auction as well as in the uh, virtual storehouse, you know, we're hoping that, you know, a lot of people can really appreciate what it is that you're doing and see your passion for what you like to explore in terms of your artwork and they can actually back and support you because I can see you doing some really uh, amazing things with what you're uh, talking about doing in terms of later on uh, in your life and with your art. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Joseph. So next I'd like to bring up Aaliyah. Aaliyah Matthews, would you please join us? Thank you. Ah, wonderful. So this is Aaliyah Matthews, everyone. And she's another one of our amazing seniors here in the program. And uh, Aaliyah has been in the program now for four years in total. So, and she's been doing a, an amazing job uh, in the program and has developed quite a body of work. So Aaliyah, can you give everyone a little bit about your background? Tell them a little bit about yourself as an artist. Hi, my name is Aaliyah Matthews. And I grew up in a Caribbean family. Um, my mom and dad are Trinidadian and growing up in a very cultural environment that kind of inspired me to pursue the creative arts. It started off with sketching some of my favorite cartoons and animations and then it kind of developed into something more when I entered Dillard Center for the Arts. And so now at, in high school I'm able to kind of cultivate this new world of art and design and creativity. And yeah. Can you tell us also, Leah, what types of uh, artwork are you making right now? Like, what are you into? You know, what are you involved with in terms of your uh, artistic trade right now? What are you, what are you playing around with? Can you so, tell us a little about that? So currently I'm working in sculpture, which is a new medium for me. So I'm, I'm used to working with drawing and photography, which is mainly my work right now in the show. But with sculpture, I'm able to explore even more with 3D elements and kind of just putting stuff together and telling a story through that. Do you find that working with your hands uh, in terms of building and creating sculptural form versus uh, you know, painting and drawing to be uh, a, a much greater challenge? Or does it feel like it's pretty much the same in terms of when you're drawing and painting? It's definitely a greater challenge because, you know, you're used to working with traditional items such as paper, pencil, like you have those in front of you. So you're able to always just sketch and everything, but then actually gathering materials like cardboard and chicken wire and clay and all these different 3D materials. It's definitely something that you're definitely not going to be used to until you start experimenting and kind of gathering your thoughts and where you're going to go with everything. That's awesome. So we have a lot of people that are, you know, in on our live stream tonight and they're all viewing. 
and I'd be curious, you know, and I'm sure some of them are curious, you know, what, what is it about you and why should they support some of the wonderful artwork that you make? And what is it about your artwork uh, that's so amazing and so fascinating as you see it that, you know, you would like people to support, you know, uh, your creative ambitions? I think my artwork is very personal and intimate to a point where it kind of reflects me as an artist and a person because my artwork, I do a lot of portraits and self portraits and it kind of reflects me as a person and my childhood and everything about myself. So I think that's what makes, what sets me apart. Okay, wonderful. Last thing, Aaliyah, can you just give us a little bit about, you know, what, what are some of your future aspirations and what are you looking to do here in the future in terms of pursuing your own art career? So I definitely have an ambition to go to an art college on full ride. And I'm not sure where I'm going to go yet, but I'm definitely applying and I'm definitely looking for new opportunities and such. That's amazing. That's awesome. I'm pretty sure you're going to get there given uh, the hard work you've put in. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the colleges bring back to you in terms of offers. And, uh, and I, I'm pretty sure that you're going to be happy at the end of it all. So thank you very much, Aaliyah. Thank you. All right. So let's have uh, Andrea come on over. And Andrea will share a little bit uh, for you guys about her uh, career plan. So come on over, Andrea. Thank you. So folks, this is Andrea Duarte. So Andrea is actually a part of our tech magnet program, and she's also been working uh, with our visual arts magnet classes as well. And she's been in the program now, I think this is your fourth year at Dillard. Is that right, Andrea? Yes. Yeah. So I've seen her part time, so I'm not quite sure how long she's been in here exactly, but I know she's definitely been here for quite some time. And uh, She's another one of our gifted and amazing students because she's working between both departments. So she's in our visual arts magnet and she's working within our tech magnet also. And she's been creating amazing work. And if you guys are taking a look at this wall that's behind her, this is actually some of Andrea's work that's actually behind her. So this wonderful piece is one of her large works uh, that we see here. So Andrea, can you give everyone uh, tonight a little bit of information about who you are and give them a little background about yourself and your family? Of course, of course. Please, I would like to say thank you for the amazing introduction. And my name is Andrea Duarte, and I'm originally from Venezuela, Caracas, and I moved here around four years ago. And upon my arrival here to the United States, I discovered the art through my cousin, who's an artist herself. And she basically enlightened me with all these visual arts, which I very became very influenced by into what I'm doing today. Uh, currently, I'm a senior at Arjuna Dillard High School. I've been doing a little bit of to both programs. And I'm doing currently an internship with the Arts Art Program, which basically helps pass the image to vision. And I'm currently exploring with 2D arts and video production and how to depict feelings into a deeper level. Awesome. Wow. So as I'm listening to you talk and you're talking about these different pieces and uh, some of the work that you're doing, you know, can you tell us a little bit about this particular piece that's actually behind you just to give us an example of, you know, uh, what it is that you're doing in terms of some of your artistic practice? Can you tell us a little bit about this piece? Of course. Of Such course. a beautiful piece of work, by the way. Thank you. Um, this piece is called Untitled, since I wanted to leave the meaning up to the audience to decide how they will connect with. But my idea was to utilize these photo essays and do the movement through each shot and show with the color symbolism through the purple to the brighter colors of the um, pinks. This progress to find e your inner calmness into this journey that the model is going through. And quite a bit of experimentation since it's not just one piece, but it's based on several ones that form one. And for the rest, it's up to the audience to think what else can be known about it. 
Oh, that's wonderful. So the, the model, I, I see there's a figure inside of this uh, particular piece. Are you using the same model or are these different models in this piece? Because some of the images are somewhat blurred, so it's hard to tell. Oh, yes. Uh, I talked into Zeralism for these vague abstractions, but it is the same model who's going to this journey to the other side, creating an explore relation between what's behind the veil and the audience. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. It's a beautiful work, so thank you for sharing that with us. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, why it is that you love, uh, you know, working digitally and what it is that's uh, the major difference for you in terms of working, uh, you know, two-dimensionally with the camera and then working uh, with your hands with drawing and painting? Of course. Um... For Soros, I could say I'm fascinated by the deeper meaning of human expression and emotions. And I found this the better medium for to express my vision through digital art and to dimensional media. And honestly, the difference is just with digital work, I'm allowed to use programs such as Photoshop to view surrealistic images as though with drawings and traditional materials. Uh, Basically, the stroke can define the work, and that's a very amazing difference that I find. Wow. So playing around with all of these different materials has allowed you to expand and grow in a lot of ways that uh, I think have, have been very beneficial to what you do. Nice. So, Andrea, can you give us a little bit about what your future aspirations and plans might be? Well, my aspiration is to go to our art leading college program and experiment with more mediums into how I can tap into these inner comments of uh, everyone and transform my vision to the world and share it. And I would like to experiment with installations and in the future be an art director and in movies and work through there. Wow, that's impressive. That is really, really impressive. And I'm sure you're gonna get there uh, without doubt because uh, I've seen your body of work and I think for anyone that's at home tonight who's looking at the artwork on the uh, auction site or in the storehouse, I mean, it's absolutely amazing work. And you'll see a lot of her work there as well as the other artists who will be coming up tonight. So thank you so much, Andrea. So let me have uh, Yana come up now. So this is Yana Agapova, everyone. And uh, Yana has been a, another one of our amazing seniors in the program who's been doing an amazing job over the past four years, who's been actually quite prolific in terms of her body of work. Uh, Yana has, has uh, as far as I can remember, with her coming into the program, I mean, she's done everything in terms of two-dimensional digital work, drawing, painting, sculpture, uh, and she just does an amazing job at all of it. So. Yana, uh, can you go ahead and just introduce yourself for us and tell us a little bit about who you are? Good evening. My name is Ayana Gapova, and I am visual arts, Florida-based artist. And I was born in Russia, and I moved to the United States in 2016. And while I was in Russia, I was doing uh, performing ballroom dancing for 10 years. Can you repeat that again? You were doing what? Ballroom dancing. Ballroom dancing. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. For 10 years. But with the move, I had to end my dancing career and I pursue visual arts at Dillard High School Center for the Arts. And currently I'm working in medias. As Joseph mentioned, I'm working with sculpture, painting, drawing, mixed media, and digital art work. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. And if you guys are in online and you're seeing any of Yana's work, I mean, you can see how amazing she is in terms of what she can do with her artwork. But I mean, she's just uh, done some amazing things over the past four years. And it's really exciting work and really exciting to see as well. So Yana, can you, uh, you know, explain to our audience tonight, uh, you know, just talk about a little bit of your work for us and you know, just give us a little bit of insight of what some of your artwork is about. Well, my art topics mostly vary from technological advances to global plastic pollution. 
and it's everything in the middle basically wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that's true <laughs> in my artworks i mostly like to experiment with my media use lots of layers lots of details and lots of color as well and through these complicated and complex compositions it helps me to visualize these complex topics such as human and nature relations and human psychology and physiology. Wow. So you're bringing in a lot of your academic studies into what you do all the time, it sounds like to yes. me. And when you're working that way, do you find it challenging to, uh, you know, uh, you know, work sculpturally or work uh, two dimensionally in terms of drawing and painting, and then also bring in those different aspects? Or do you find that it's a very fluid thing and you just kind of move through them? I believe that it's a very fluid thing, just as you said, because I really enjoy making and sculpture and painting and digital arts as well. And it's just something that I like to do and it works for me. So, yeah. So, so how long have you been creating art? Because I know you were a ballroom dancer prior to this. So were you creating art while dancing or pretty did much, the art come after? Pretty much, yes. I was mostly self-taught in arts and crafts, but most of my time ballroom dancing took away from me. So when it ended, I took all of my time and just put it into art. And, wow, amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Wonderful. Wow. So uh, one last question for you. Uh, so here it is, you're in your senior year and uh, you know things are winding down here. We're coming up to the Christmas break right now. And I know you guys have already been putting in college applications and you know applying for scholarships and doing a lot of the stuff seniors should be doing this time of the year. Uh, so what, what, what schools are you applying to and what, what are you looking to do once you get to the uh, college arena? Well, I'm very passionate about pursuing installation art and studio arts majors. And it's mostly school as Tuft Institute of Art and School of Art Institute in Chicago because they have very good opportunities in these majors. And I believe that I can explore myself in there and finally defeat my struggle with big artwork through that because most of my artworks are small yeah. as you know of course so you're looking to expand and really get yes. large and be able to play around with uh, material and media yes. in such a way that you can you know do very large pieces probably <laughs> yes. even larger than what we see here with andrea's work so yes. that's amazing that's amazing okay so Thank you, Yana. And I'd like for everyone to make sure you go on and really uh, get into the website. Take a look at Yana's work. Uh, it's just amazing work. And I call Yana Yana. It's really Ayana. So, but I've always called her Yana uh, over the past four years. It's really Ayana Agapova. So uh, get in online and really take a look at a lot of her wonderful work. She's doing some amazing things and please support uh, what these guys are doing in terms of their artwork and their future goals and aspirations. Thank you. Thank you so, so thank you, Yana. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, bring up Isabella next. All right. Have a seat for us, Isabella. Hello. So, everyone, this is uh, Isabella Lewis. So Isabella is actually a, a transfer student into our program. So she came in as a junior uh, into the program. And uh, as a junior coming into the program, I didn't necessarily know what I was getting uh, or what to expect from her. I just knew she was amazingly talented and uh, there was a lot of potential there. But you often uh, don't know what's going to happen in the course of two years when you have a student as opposed to having them for four years. And Isabella has come into the program and she's actually uh, flourished uh, over the over this uh, past two years. And uh, as she transitions and moves through this final year, uh, I see a lot of really uh, 
positive and strong things happening for her as she wraps up this uh, senior year. And uh, she's already been in uh, many shows and exhibitions and has uh, you know, exhibited her work in many places so far. Also, she's been a part of uh, different competitions where she's uh, done well. So, you know, I, I just want you to introduce yourself and talk about who you are a little bit so they understand who you are and where you're coming from a little, okay? All right, okay. Well, my name is Isabella Lewis. I am originally from South Florida. My family, they all originate from Nicaragua, however. And I, throughout my entire life, I had this fascination in making artwork, particularly drawing, particularly, you know, drawing people. And, you know, that kind of went on until I went into my freshman year and then that kind of um, catalyst, um, yeah, catalysted some uh, my artistic growth and I decided that I wanted to be an artist. And that's when it all kind of fell into place. I started taking the mentorship under the portrait artist Elizabeth Reed and I started taking classes at that Dillard Center for the Arts. And then I was accepted into Dillard Center of the Arts where I uh, started doing the magnet program. Thus, I'm here today. <laughs> oh, wow. So you've, you've been in a lot of outside programs because you've been trying to you know, grow and develop what it is that you do in terms of working with the figure, working with the body, portraiture, and so on. Uh, how have you found that your transition from you know, some of these outside programs along with working with Diller Center for the Arts inside of our program has really grown what it is that you do in terms of working with the figure and the portrait? Well, um... All of that outside mentorship really just prepared me for um, starting with Dillard. Um, it's a very, it's a very intense program. It, it requires most of your time. So having that background and having that foundation laid down already before I came in here really helped. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's really good because uh, a lot of times when we have uh, students who are coming into our program and applying for the program, uh, it's not one of those things where we will typically bring in someone that's a junior or senior level unless, you know, they're at the caliber that they need to be to be able to finish up those last two years of school. And you've definitely been one of those people that have been working extremely hard and keeping uh, on top of the assignments that have been given to you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here tonight. So, And uh, it's been quite impressive to see you work as hard as you have over the past couple of uh, years here. And I'm looking forward to seeing how you wrap up this year with what you've been working on. Uh, can you give us a little bit of information about what types of artwork uh, you're currently working on and what it is about uh, working with the human figure and body that intrigues you so much? Yeah, um, so when I started that freshman year, I kind of started with this fascination around artists like Caravaggio and Rembrandt, Rubens, those kinds of people this classical artwork, and all of them involved the human figure heavily. And this kind of, um, I started to love, and I had this huge appreciation for the human form. So um, once I started, uh, you know, kind of experimenting a little more in my artwork, I um, took that and I incorporated it into how I um, depict people, their, um, their emotions, their, and their atmosphere and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Wow. So uh, a lot of what I've been seeing in terms of what you create, I mean, it's been sensational artwork. And I think everyone that's in on the uh, uh, live stream tonight, once you get in there and you're taking a look at Isabella's work, I mean, she does an amazing job of uh, working with the human figure and body and uh, portraiture but she's also working with other things that are beyond that in terms of very conceptual work and very conceptual ideas as she tells a story and plays around uh, with these figures in her work. And it's been beautiful work that I've seen over the past couple of years. And I think anyone that's in on uh, the uh, online store or inside of the uh, silent auction tonight, you'll really get an opportunity to experience some of the amazing work that she's creating uh, through what she's doing. Isabella, can you tell us a little bit about where, where it is that you're thinking about going to school and what are your, uh, you know, prospective plans for uh, graduation once you're done here in the program? I would love to tell you about that. Ah, please share. <laughs> um, 
New York's the dream. New York is the dream. Yeah, New York's the dream. I want to go up north. I want to study um, at FIT, or I just actually got accepted into the School of Visual Arts. So, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if any of you guys know SVA, SVA is one of the major programs up in the uh, New York area. So, that, congratulations. That's big. Thank you. Thank you. But um, until. Um, for, for now, we're, that kind of is in, uh, up in arms. It's up in arms for now. I have to kind of figure out where accepts me, what my plan is until then, but primarily New York's the dream. I want to go up there and, you know, experience the people, all these different things, and really expand myself as an artist. And what are you looking to study while you're there? Painting. Painting. Yes. So you painting. definitely want to be a painting major. I want to be a painter. I want to be a freelance painter, perhaps uh, have a... Uh, a liberal arts degree on the side, but that's that's really the plan. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And I just happen to be a painter myself, and uh, coming from uh, a painter, I can tell you you're doing some amazing stuff uh, with the brush and paint, so great job. So thank you, Isabella. Thank you. And uh, please get on tonight, check out Isabella's work, check out the rest of these guys' work, and let me have Janiyah come up now, thank you. Let's welcome Janaya Pascal. This is Janaya. So, <laughs> Janaya is another one of our amazing seniors in the program. Janaya has always been quite reserved and a little shy. So even though uh, you know she's she's an amazing student that's been you know making all of this wonderful work, she's very low key and doesn't draw much attention to herself. But tonight, I really want to draw some attention to her because she also has some amazing work that's in the exhibition. Janaya has done a number of uh, sculptural works that you will see in the show. She's one of the few people that has sculptural work in the exhibit tonight. And uh, when you're in there checking it out, you can really see what she's been up to in terms of her creativity and her talent in terms of what she does. Uh, Janaya, can you tell us really quickly a little bit about your background and who you are? Okay. Um, I was born and raised in Florida. Um, my parents are from the Caribbean, the Virgin Islands, and mainly my family is from St. Croix. St. Croix, okay. Yep, and I actually have been... Just speak up oh. just a little for us, Janaya. thank you. Um, I actually never really been out of Florida. Okay, you really haven't been out of Florida, you're saying? No. Let me move your mic a little closer to you, just so, yeah, I know. Like I said, Janaya is one of my shy ones, so, but, you know, go ahead. So you've never really been out of Florida, you were saying? Yes, because I'm a student. Okay. And that's basically, I want to go out of state for college because I want to experience something different other than here, and then I can, you know, probably find something different. Okay, so you're really looking for some sort of a new experience that takes you outside of the state, and you can actually experience, you know, some sort of a different place in terms of uh, growing your artwork and developing what it is that you do. So, Janaya, tell us real quick, you know, I know, uh, you know, you've been in our for program for a little while now, and you've been experiencing all of these different types of uh, materials and ways of making art. What area of art intrigues you the most in terms of what it is you like to create and what it is you like to make? Um, I would say sculpture. And the funny thing about it, when I first got into the program, I was scared to go into the program because <laughs> Mr. Joseph was like, you have to do sculpture and you have to do 2D and you have to do photography and stuff. And I would mainly do 2D design work. And then as I got to do 3D more, I actually found it better <laughs> so for you working with your hands mm -hmm. allowed you to open up and relax and really enjoy making art and you found it as an avenue or a way that you could create and you could actually get your ideas and your thoughts across in terms of what it is that you'd like to express in your work yeah that's that's awesome that's awesome so when when you're creating something uh with your hands and you're 
you know, building something sculpturally, what's the biggest challenge for you in that create creation process? The biggest challenge would probably be finding stability. Finding stability? <laughs> because when you're now making, explain that for us. Sure. Um, when you're making a sculpture, sometimes it will fail because you'll start to build something and then you have to find something else to make it work because it won't stand up or you might have a different idea for it. Uh -huh. And so that's probably like the hardest thing about it. Okay. But other huh. than that, it's kind of easy. Yeah, so you actually find it kind of easy. It's kind of nice when you get into a place where you really like what you do, you know, what you what it is that you like to do. Things just become uh, that much easier. There is a question coming into us uh, from the chat here, and someone wants to know uh, where where do you find your materials uh, to create and uh, build some of the sculptural stuff that you're making? Like, where do you get the stuff from? Actually, my materials is mainly found objects. Mainly found objects. Now, for anyone at home that doesn't know what found objects are, can you explain that for them? Um, found objects is probably something that you found in your house or old parts from computers or an old toy that you had before. So it sounds like anything that might be discarded, uh, stuff that people may not want anymore, and you're taking these types of things and you're creating wonderful pieces of artwork with it. That's 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 terrific. So uh, for the person that was asking, so, you know, when you're out and about and you're walking through your neighborhood or you're walking through different parts of your home or other people's home and you see things that are being thrown out, do you look at that stuff and you think to yourself, wow, I can really make something neat with that? Or, or is it something you pass by and you ignore? No, I'll I can probably make something out of that. And so why why does that happen for you as, as an artist? I mean, why do you see other people's, you know, discarded trash as something that you can create beautiful artwork out of? Maybe, Tell us a little bit about that. Um, probably the reason is because I mean, trash is probably not always trash. You can probably make something beautiful out of it and recycle it. That's 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 a really good point. I mean, to recycle someone's uh, discarded materials and create beautiful artwork. And I mean, if you go on the uh, site and you're looking at uh, some of the stuff Denai has created, I mean, she's taken some really beautiful materials and uh, enhanced them even further in what she's created. Uh, I have one last question for you before I wrap up with you. Uh, you're coming towards the end of your senior year as well, and I know you've been making preparations and plans to go off to school. Uh, can you share with us where you're thinking about going to school right now? And I know so, for some of you guys, it isn't a certainty. You know, you're applying to a lot of different places, but can you share with us where you're thinking about going to school? Sure. Um, I applied to CCS. Um, and that's in Detroit, Michigan? Correct. And I actually got accepted there. Oh, you got accepted into CCS. Wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Wow. And I'm also applying to the School of Chicago. Design. Okay, the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Correct. And I'm also thinking of applying to SCAD and probably a few other ones, but I'm not certain yet. And when you get to uh, one of your destinations, whichever one you decide to choose, what is going to be your intended major? I mean, what are you planning on studying? Um, about that, I'm not really sure right now. So right now you're undecided, but you are planning on exploring. Yes, because I want to explore and have different experiences with different materials and probably find something new that I never experienced before. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. So I am wishing you all of the luck, and I don't think I need to give you uh, much in terms of uh, luck, because I think your artwork speaks for itself. And for you guys that are uh, at home tonight uh, on the live stream, please get in there and check out Janaya's work. Like I said, she's one of our few artists that's creating sculptural work, and she has some amazing work in uh, the exhibition. So you'll see some of the wonderful stuff that she's been up to. And I got to applaud you because 
there aren't a lot of people making sculpture. So if you can work with your hands and build and create and uh, create beautiful things for people to see, you know, that, that's a blessing in itself. So thank you, Janaya. Thank you. All right. So let's have uh, Michaela come up next. This is Michaela Chan. Thank you, Michaela. <laughs> So you guys, this is Michaela Tran. She is also another one of our students Hi. that's in both disciplines. So she's in the Emerging Computer Technology Program as well as she has taken classes in the uh, Visual and Fine Arts uh, Program as well. So, so Michaela, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and give us a little bit of background about yourself? Um, the, I'm a first generation uh, Vietnamese, uh, Vietnamese, uh, now I'm going to ask you to speak up a little oh. bit too, because Michaela Hello. has one of those tiny voices. <laughs> tiny <so>. voices. <laughs> uh, I'm a first generation Vietnamese person in my family. So I was born here in South Florida and literally live here for all my whole life. Um, I went to, uh, so, so. for my schooling, I went to like a lot of, uh, STEM field, uh, STEM field schools, so. STEM field schools? Tell us a little bit about that. What are STEM field schools? Uh, STEM field schools are science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, it's, I'm very technical with a lot of my work. It's just very hands-on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, so tell us how you're using a lot of those experiences uh, coming from a STEM field school. Mm -hmm. And how are you uh, bringing that experience into a lot of the artwork you're uh, creating now? Uh, with my artwork, I'd like to manipulate uh, my pieces with how to do either digitally with, through Photoshop or physically through cutting it up physically and like chopping it up and putting it back together to make a new piece. Huh. Okay. And is there anything that you're uh, learning about how you use the camera or the different processes through some of the software that you're using, like Photoshop, Illustrator, and anything like that, uh, that you're uh, discovering along the way as you create? Uh, I'm always learning new things about programs because it's always new to me. I love learning about stuff. Uh, some processes, is like I have to learn through um, experiences. So if something fails, it's all like, oh, that's nice to know yeah, and just yeah. learn again. <laughs> It's, it's always amazing when you uh, go through this process of discovery and you're learning things along the way and you're, you know, finding different ways to create, you know, what it is that you create. I've seen a lot of your work and I noticed that you are taking a lot of photography and a lot of that photography is based on images of people and places, uh, you know, all around your neighborhood and your community. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your artwork and what you know, some of the people at home are going to see in terms of uh, when they go into the uh, auction site and what they're going to see when they're uh, in the storehouse checking out your work? Uh, my artwork usually broads from nature to people. Uh, I love doing candid shots or like or extreme close-ups to get every like detail of um, a subject and getting all the memories of one single experience. Oh, wow. So you mentioned this word memories. Uh, what is it about photographing something uh, that that really, uh, you know, makes it important or special for you? I mean, as you're walking around, I mean, there's so much in our world to see, uh, you know, and when you walk up on your subject matter and you see something that's really uh, interesting to you, what is it about trying to capture that memories? Uh, is so important for you. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, for me, I just, I love taking photos. When I take photos, it's just that I have this feeling of just like euphoria. Yeah, euphoria, okay. <laughs> it's, it's just like, I can't really explain it. It's just. So you're, you're truly excited when you I'm find so, your when, subject when matter. When I find and... that subject matter, it's so nice. It's like, oh, I wish I could frame it, but I, I can't frame it with a camera. <laughs> And once you capture your subject matter, having that moment captured, uh, you know, with your camera allows you to go back and enjoy that memory. Yeah, just, uh, I'll just 
bring myself back into that moment that I took that picture as cliche as it sounds and bring color to my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And sometimes it's the simple things in life that makes for some of the most beautiful artwork. And uh, I think you're one of those people when you have a camera, uh, you're able to capture things that most people would not normally see you know, behind the camera. And I've, I've uh, seen a lot of the work that you've been creating and I have a great appreciation for what you've uh, done over the past four years uh, with the camera. And it's really amazing and beautiful work that you've been doing with some of your digital work and your photography. So, uh, you know, definitely keep that up and, you know, uh, find those mo moments of euphoria when, after you leave here as well and continue to work on what you're working on. Uh, I still have a couple of questions for you before I let you go here, though. Uh, so what is it about, you know, uh, you know, when you think about everything that you've done from your childhood to now, uh, you know, pursuing your career as an artist, what is it about uh, coming through a program like the Emerging Computer Technology and the Visual Arts Program uh, that has, you know, developed your skills over the, the, the past four years here that you've seen uh, being in the program? Uh, developing from since I was a kid to now in high school mm -hmm. as a senior. Uh, develop, uh, being in that STEM field, it's just, I don't really get to use like a lot of art. It's just a lot of math, a lot of drawing to blueprint out stuff, to plan out stuff. It's just like, and then once I got into high school through Miss Jenkins, um, the uh, photography teacher at uh, Dillard uh, Tech Mag and the Dillard Tech Mag, she became my little my mentor, and I love that she became she became my mentor, teaching me everything she knows about um, photography, and absolutely loved it through the programs and in uh, at Dillard here at Dillard, yeah. Yeah, and you, you bring up Ms. Jenkins' name, and, uh, you know, for uh, any of the students who are here, and we all know Ms. Jenkins, she retired uh, last year, and we all miss her greatly, uh, and I know she's at uh, home right now watching you guys on the live stream, and she's extremely proud of all of you, as I am as well, so, and I know she misses you guys terribly, as, as, as I know you guys miss her. And I know she's uh, at home right now watching you guys just re really proud of uh, the hard work that you put in over the past four years. And, uh, and, I'm, and I know she put in a lot of time and effort into building your creative talents and making sure you were prepared for your next step. And I see that in the uh, work that you've done. Uh, so this is your senior year. What are you planning on doing as a senior? I mean, what do you, where are you planning on going to school? What, do, you know, what are you looking to pursue? I, as I heard, everyone here wants to go to an art school and everything. Um, I just really want to stay here in Florida to help out with my family. Go to Brow College or like McFadder, really, uh, the McFadder Technical College here. And what are you looking to study? Uh, I'm also looking to study photography, but how, however, I do have an interest in um, forensics photography. What is it? Forensics photography. Forensics? Forensics. Forensics. Okay. Forensic photography. <laughs> that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> so I, I definitely think that's an interesting line of work. And I think uh, your skills will be needed in a place like that, you know, to be able to capture, you know, those small details of things that people might miss. So, uh, you know, I wish you all the luck and, you know, all the best with that because uh, that's amazing, you know. <laughs> And I'm glad you're going to be staying home, which means we'll be seeing you. Yes, always. <laughs> so thank you so much, Michaela. Mm. And next, I'm going to have Melanie come on up. Thank you. <laughs> Melanie is our last artist of the uh, eight that are in the exhibition. So thank you, Melanie. So everyone, mm -hmm. this is Melanie Casanova. So Melanie came into the program uh, four years ago, and I, I, I'm amazed to uh, see her now because I can't believe it's been four years and she's a senior now and she's going to be graduating and leaving us. So, uh, But she's been doing an amazing job over the past four years, building an, an amazing portfolio with some terrific work in it. I mean, she has amazing skill and 
I, I need for you guys to please, please, please go in on the online store and get into the uh, silent auction and check out the work of uh, students like Melanie and the other students that are here tonight because uh, we need to support what it is that they're doing and uh, support their career plans as they move from high school into uh, the college realm and prepare to uh, pursue their careers. So Melanie, please tell us really quickly a, a little bit about yourself mm -hmm. and a little bit about your background. Uh, my name is Melanie Casanova. I was born and raised in Miami, uh, but then I later moved on to Broward County. Uh, my family is from Argentina, and ever since like I was little, uh, I enjoyed making art um, because it was like the only way I was able to express myself, especially as like a quiet person. Um, and yeah. Thank you. Wow. So <laughs> you said, you know, you found this, that this was a way for you as a quiet person to express yourself. Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about that. You know, what, what was it about, uh, you know, creating art uh, opened up an avenue of expression for you, uh, given that, you know, you lived a very quiet, you know, life? Uh, well, I always like um, drew my own like little comics and uh, like stories and characters of my own. Um, especially like, uh, I used to always like watch, um, people play games and stuff. And like, I kind of wanted to start like drawing my own ideas from like those games and yeah. And you would just develop all of these little characters and these little stories in your free yeah. time and just, uh, you know, explore what was in your head really. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Now you've been, uh, creating art since, uh, you know, you were what age? Uh, ever since like probably fourth grade, um, mainly because uh, I had like art classes in my elementary school and I remember like creating like artworks and my teacher would always put them at the fair whenever we had it yearly or put it up in like the offices of the school. And it just inspired me to like um, keep on creating more. Wow, yeah. and you've been creating some amazing stuff, so mm. wow. So, Melanie, what 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 are you uh, currently working on? What type of artwork are you creating? What kind of artwork are the people at home that are on the live stream now going to see uh, once they get to the silent auction in the uh, storehouse where you guys have your artwork? Can you tell us a little bit about the artwork and talk a little bit about what it is that you're doing? Uh -huh. um, so, currently, I am trying to develop... Uh, realistic artworks or characters of my own, especially in like my digital pieces or pieces that I use in like ink or pencil. And um, I'm just trying to like uh, improve on those skills mainly. So like later in life, I can uh, help develop like my own characters in a way, yeah. And what do you want to do with those character developments? Where do you want to go to school? What do you want to study? What do you want to do with all of that uh, creativity? Um, I'm undecided on which specific um, college. So far, I've applied to Full Sail. Um, I want to go into uh, the major like game development um, because I want to start creating like illustrations and um, help uh, with computer animation and 3D modeling for uh games basically wow yeah. wow and do you play games yourself yeah i enjoy okay. playing so through playing these games and watching some of the uh game designers and some of the work that they've put into their game design does that inspire you to want to take what you've been working on and also yeah. create your own um because like it inspired me myself from like these games whenever i like saw the art, it, it it was always what like stood out to me, the characters and the story. And I kind of just want to like do that myself and help inspire others as well. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Wow. So uh, you've told us, you know, basically what you want to do and where you want to go for the most part. Is there anything that you want to share with anyone out there tonight in terms of uh, why they should go to the uh, Senior Art Show uh, 
storehouse and also the uh, silent auction site to support you guys? Uh, I would, I think that it's like um, good for like the students um, because like it will also like inspire them to keep on creating more art because um, they see that people are actually supporting them. And I feel like uh, that people should come in personally, physically, because it's so much more better to look at the pieces um, straight up rather like than on digital screen and yeah. I can definitely agree yeah. with you there. So uh, for everyone at home, we have artwork that's also hanging here at Destination Sis Trunk. And uh, you know, if you have an opportunity to set up an appointment and make it out here, just like Melanie's saying, I mean, it's really inspiring to be able to see the artwork online, but to be in front of it and looking at it with your uh, naked eye. I mean, it's just really amazing artwork by these young artists. And you definitely want to get out here so you can see their work uh, live and in person. So set up an appointment uh, with Shereen Mullings. It's on the uh, invitation and card information that was sent out. Get onto the uh, auction site, view the students' work, make a purchase, support these young people uh, you know, by uh, buying their artwork. These guys are our future. And uh, you know, the amazing work that they've been doing over the past four years is proof of that. So before I have you get up and leave, mm -hmm. I wanna bring all of you guys back up on stage so they can see you guys. Cause uh, tonight is really about these guys. So please, everyone come back up on stage. If you guys can just stand right here. And just come on in, file on in, everyone. <laughs> this is our amazing age right here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out this evening and uh, viewing the student artwork. Uh, look for these guys in the future because these are going to be some of the uh, you know, most influential artists that are out there. They're going to be doing some really big things that I... I don't care where they end up. I'm just pretty certain of it that they're going to be doing some amazing artwork wherever they are. So thank you, you guys, for uh, presenting such beautiful work. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, uh, everyone in the live stream and in the audience for coming on out tonight and supporting these guys because I know that you guys are there buying artwork for creating such beautiful work. So thank you. And I'm going to pass this on over to uh, Israel Charles. Yes. To give some uh, final comments to end off our show tonight. Man, all I can say is, wow, I've been stuck in the store and in the silent auction. And uh, as I always have, man, there's always some tough choices to make. There's so much good stuff in there. I can't get put out of the house by my wife and spend all our money because I really kind of want to buy a lot of stuff. So I have to be uh, making some tough choices. But I just want to say, wow, so proud of the students. I want to congratulate the students. Uh, your, the way you articulated uh, your thoughts and, 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 and your inspiration and, and your viewpoints about your creations uh, is very, very impressive. I think when I opened the show, I talked about how phenomenal our visual arts program is. And maybe when you were uh, listening at the beginning, if you caught it, you probably said, well, that's just the artistic director. He's always going to say good stuff about his, his school and his program. But I think you can see now that it's for real. And the students are for real. And, and congratulations to Mr. Joseph, another great senior art show. Big ups to Ms. Jenkins. Yes, shout out to her. We miss you as well. Uh, a lot of her work went into uh, these students and, and getting them ready for this presentation. So we certainly want to congratulate her as well. And I, I want to remind you, even after we sign off, the store is still going to be open. So when, when I get offline, I got to go back and find what I'm going to purchase. But uh, you can join us there. Uh, Mr. Joseph talked about uh, your ability to come to uh, come and see the artwork live. And you can reach out to him in the store. His contact information is uh, located there. So you can set up your appointment if you just want to show up in person and watch. So what an amazing presentation. I want to thank everybody that was involved, especially my girl, Grace, who always is looking out for us here at Builder Center for the Arts. 
the Battle of Cultural Divisions uh, and the work that they continue to do with Dillard Center for the Arts as well. Uh, the Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention and Visitors Bureau, thank you so much for the role that you played in tonight's presentation. And the fellas at Arc Labs on the backside doing the tech production and everybody involved in putting all of this together. Uh, we really, really do appreciate it. And thank you for joining us tonight. And we're just an email or phone call away. Uh, feel free to share this. I, I think we're going to have it archived. So feel free to share with your friends, your family, and let's go ahead and support our students. Uh, you can see the work that they're doing. And while you're supporting them, you're going to get some fresh artwork that you can hang at the house. And everybody will come over and they'll be impressed and be like, where'd you get that piece from? And you can, you know, really be like you're a special custom design by the Dillard Center for the Arts students, however you want to build it up. But uh, please do support us. We thank you for your time. And I think on behalf of everybody involved tonight, I do want to say thank you once again and wish everyone a good night, a blessed and safe and prosperous holiday season. And please stay safe. Thank you so very much. Good night.